Hey, hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today I'm taking a look at the expansion to Viceroy. This is Times of Darkness. Viceroy is an excellent card game with a little bit of bidding, some combo building. You are putting together a pyramid of power with uh, small square cards in front of you, creating combinations, matching colors, and basically gaining different victory points from a few different things. The expansion here has a bunch of new tokens in it, a couple of variants, and basically three modules included that you can choose to use when you play the game and you can mix and match them even. You can play them individually, you could throw in all three of them, you can do it however you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and take a look at how this all works. I'm gonna show you what's in this box specifically, not teach you the original game, but we have videos available for that. If you're not familiar with Viceroy, check out our review for that. And uh, then we'll come on back and I'll tell you what I think of the expansion, all right? So if you're familiar with the base game, Let's dive right in. Here is everything that you are going to get in the expansion. You're gonna have some new tokens, these two categories of tokens, and they're just basically more of the same than you have uh, already in the base game. Victory points, some of these with the swords and the shields, the science tokens, all of that. So more of those. I do wanna mention they have a slight difference in coloration to the original ones. These are a little bit more orange than the original printing of these tokens, the one I have anyway. So, uh, you know, a minor thing, but they're slightly different, so we'll move them aside for now. You are going to get uh, these tokens that are used in the new expansions, and they are diamonds. They kind of behave like a wild gem. So you can cash these in for any color you would need that you don't have. You can also use these to bid, and when you do so, you decide what color it is after any discussion that might ensue, okay? Okay. So there you go, diamonds, very powerful tokens. You've got over here, new starting cards. And now instead of in the, in the original game, you would be dealt a few characters, you placed one to begin your pyramid of power, you kept one, right? Now instead you get one of these and you start with a, a character in your hand. Uh, instead of uh, the uh, playing a character, what you do is you pick one of these four bonuses listed right there to begin the game. Above and beyond what you already started the game with. Some law cards in your hand and, uh, you know, some gems and so forth. Now you can take one of the science tokens, a sword token, an extra card in your hand, or four gems of your choice, whatever colors you want. So there's one of these per player's. And as you'll also see, these have wild colors in the corner, which is going to help get you those circles and those extra gems, as well as scoring early in the game. Really nice idea. I like these quite a bit. You've got, you've got these two cards here, which are used for two-player games. You can use them in solitaire as well. And now you only have two options, possibly four, of course. And there's going to be more clashing. That's the idea. You can put these on whatever side you want as long as they show all four colors. So you cannot do that, of course, because blue is there twice, there's no yellow. But if you do that, then uh, and, and uh, both players bid, uh, one player green, the other player yellow, that is still a clash in this case, and they have to discard those tokens and bid again, unless, of course, they can debate about which of the two cards they would like. Also like this idea a lot, it makes the game uh, feel and simulate uh, the... Uh, the way that it goes with more players, more confrontations. And then the main uh, bread and uh, butter here is, uh, that's not a thing, is it? Uh, the three modules that come in the game. So I'll start with this one up here, the simplest, and honestly, I think the least impressive, that's the aristocrats. The aristocrats are going to behave just like regular characters in the game. They are going to be played, their first level is always two gems of any colors, and then after that, they have no power there either. After that, then you start making rewards. So for example, this character here, if I bid two gems, then a yellow, then a blue, I'm gonna get a shield, and I'm gonna get three diamonds, excellent. And then they always have no color here, but instead a power, possibly tokens that you don't take. They're, they're simply represented on the card and uh, you know will give you new abilities, new uh, concepts in play. 
Yeah, it's also going to have a few new laws that you shuffle into the law deck. So again, a very simple mix to the game. Next up, we've got the invasion module. This one, you are going to prep the deck of cards so that one of these monsters shows up at the beginning of every round in a specific order. And they are going to stack up. So they are going to be, you're going to have, for example, one of these will be uh, revealed uh, like so. And then you're going to get another one, a level two monster to show up like that, actually. That'll show up, and then that might show up the next round. And then that, let's pick a different one here. That might show up the next round, and then finally that. Once there's a stack of four monsters, then you are going to fight against them. You're going to repel their attack. And you have to bid a certain number of tokens to do that. Now, you can go as high up as you want to here. This works basically like a, a card, just like one of the other normal cards that these four build in between them. So if I bid, for example, three yellow and another yellow and a green, I'm gonna get a card, I'm gonna get a sword. That's great. And then uh, I have repelled the attack and I got a little bonus for it. If I'm able to go all the way to the top, I'm gonna get seven victory points, a sword, four diamonds. If you do not repel any of them, meaning I don't even have three yellow to, to fight these guys off with, I'm going to get a negative four victory points. I'm gonna take one of these cards and keep it as a penalty. And once that's done, these four go away from the game and we are going to start building a new deck again, a new stack of four cards. And after four rounds, another attack will happen. Uh, really neat idea, I like that a lot and it gives you something else to consider, holding back tokens, uh, how much do you want their powers specifically, things like that. These also come with a few laws, but these cards here, which are a great idea. The way this works is, if you clash with someone over a color, and you cannot come to an agreement as to which card you want, that token goes on this card instead of simply being, being thrown away. So let's say we clash over green, I keep my green right here. And when we fight the monsters during the invasion, I can use these tokens towards my quote-unquote bid for pushing them away. So it makes that clash not as horrible if someone is over there getting away with not clashing in a three-player game and the other two players keep wasting their tokens. Well, in this case, they're not wasted. They go here and you can save them for the attack. Really nice stuff. I like that a lot. And then lastly, we've got Underworld over here. And in Underworld, you're going to have one of these characters in your hand. And in fact, at the beginning of every round, if you don't have one, you will draw one. And then you may choose to play this in the line below the base of your pyramid. Uh, you will match colors there as well, but there is no color down here because there will be nothing below this line. They're in the Underworld, right below the pyramid. Kind of neat. And then you're going to take some Corruption Tokens to do something, all right? So if you take two corruption tokens, in this case, you'll get a science. Three corruption tokens, you are going to get five uh, diamonds. Four corruption tokens, you get to move one of your free cards somewhere else. And they have all sorts of things. And then from the ones you take, which are these corruption tokens here, you'll be able to get rid of one and you have to keep the rest, right? And some of them are blank. That's great. Not too bad. Some of them are going to cost you victory points, they're going to cancel your tokens, all sorts of bad things. Score negatively some of your tokens, like this one says science symbols are minus two to you. That's pretty bad stuff. Uh, but they do another thing that is probably my favorite thing they do, and that is give you these tokens, these bribe tokens here. And whenever you take any bribe tokens, you can choose to discard them and reactivate a character in your pyramid. You have to pay a number of them equal to the level that character is sitting on and you get their power again. It's fantastic. It's like playing a card into the same spot twice. So this can really give you some, some excellent you know, turns that feel great. Oh look, that character made me 10 victory points earlier. Guess what? 10 victory points again. Very cool stuff. So there you go. That's how that works. This one, of course, has a couple of laws in there as well that you'll shuffle in. 
But that's largely the game. That's how it all is going to work out in, uh, you know, in combination with the original game. You can choose to use only one of these. You can mix a couple. You can even include all three, and that works just fine. So let's go back up top and let me tell you what I think of it. All right, so let's talk about Viceroy Times of Darkness. I have to say, I really like the base game. I've been a fan of it for a long time. And honestly, I was always a little surprised and sort of disappointed that, that they hadn't come out with an expansion. And this is a little late, to be honest. It's a game that, I, it's an expansion that I'm not sure is going to really catch on. I wonder how many people have simply moved on from Viceroy, the original game. But... If you have it, if you enjoyed it, and you still kept it, uh, I, I think you're really going to enjoy this. So let's go ahead and talk about it, okay? I'm going to start with the thematic ties and the setting here. Viceroy was never a game that was particularly thematic, but I think they found a way to, to grow the world, so to speak, in very nice ways. They've added monsters that you have to fight off. And again, a lot of this is sort of in, in quotations, fight them off. You, you bid against them, I guess. Uh, they've found a way to add in uh, sort of shady underworld characters. You have the aristocrats. It's a nice evolution of what was already there. And yes, it was tenuous at best, but there is a little more of a thematic connection now. The aesthetics, I like for the most part. Card quality is very nice. Illustrations are very nice. I have a couple of small issues, which is why it gets a small ding from me here. Uh, and that is... The box is tremendously oversized. That box there is largely empty when you when you get it. I was able to very easily fit everything that came in it in my base game. And I'll just simply get rid of that box, but be aware of it. You know, it's a uh, I don't normally enjoy seeing such a waste of space like that and and uh, this could have been done in a different size. I know they wanted you to keep both. They even had on the Kickstarter, they had this one sleeve you would put around both boxes. Completely unnecessary. You just don't need the second box. The other thing I wish they would have done was take an opportunity here to include a new scoring pad uh, that features spaces on here for the new scoring opportunities. So... Uh, that's that's unfortunate because now you just have to find somewhere on the, on the breakdown here to include the scores that come from the new things you're doing in the game. So that's that's uh, a little bit of a letdown. This would have been a great time to do a little fan service, include not just an extra pad, but also make it that it features the the categories that are new to the expansion. So there you go. Again, minor nitpicks, really. But I want to mention it. All right, replayability. Excellent. New ways to play. Several ways to play. Mixing and matching really works well. They have the new cards for two players or solitaire. I really like these. These are a great addition. It's a smart move. The starting cards. I really like them. That's a clean idea. Very simple to get going. I like that. Um, overall, like I say, replayability is very high for me. The game length stays about the same. I'm very happy with that. And now you feel like you are doing more, so I enjoy it. Uh, ease of play. The players, it seems to me, with some of the modules, especially like the uh, the Underworld characters, the players are going to have a little bit more of a direction now. You, you start not just from, oh, I got a couple of cards. I guess these things work together. I'll do that. Now you begin from a place of... Um, Certainty, a little more anyway. You you are going to, as you see the cards you are dealt, as you see that Underworld card, that might help you go, hmm, I'm going for scrolls. I'm collecting scrolls this game. That's where my big points are going to come from. So I like that. I like having that. I like the, uh, just the way it makes you consider things you wouldn't normally consider earlier in the game. I felt the same way, in fact, about a Seven Wonders uh, first expansion, which was the uh, the leaders. That game was it is great, but it felt a little directionless at first. With leaders, it gave us something to shoot towards. I think this manages to do a little bit of that as well. Um, the tactics, strategy, luck, things like that. Overall, the feeling of gambling and the feeling of pushing your luck, the feeling of 
how much can I get away with, I think is enhanced in this game, especially with the, with the invasion module. The idea of these, you know, mounting costs that you better get ready for in a couple of rounds. Here they come. You're going to be able to bid on these. If you go higher up, you'll make a really juicy reward. But you might be underbidding and you might be underbuilding to prep for that. I like that push and pull. I like that feeling in the game. You know, this idea of prepping for something big coming. There's also that in the uh, Underworld expansion, right? I mean, I have another one. This is a great power. Do I take more of these corruption tokens? Can I sustain that? Am I, am I forcing myself to lose the game in order to quote-unquote get ahead? I love that kind of feeling in a game. And this one manages to give me that feeling. So there you go. Overall, I do like the expansion. Very few missteps here, honestly. Uh, I'm excited that this is available and out, and I definitely would recommend it. So let me give you a bottom line here. An excellent expansion that revitalizes the base game can be played in parts and yet manages to work all together. This is going to get an 8 out of 10 from me. Really like it. And I, I really like pretty much all the modules. I have to say the one I like the least is the Aristocrats. They're a little sort of samey. But the Invasion and Underworld modules are fantastic. So again, big thumbs up from me. I recommend it. This, of course, is going to get a seal of approval. So make sure you check this one out if you're a fan of the base game. And hey, if, you, if you've never played the base game, it's a really good card game. I recommend you give it a look. So there you go, everybody. That is it for me. I'm Z Garcia. I'll see you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.